After the DuPont Dow merger, pensioners are worried about their future. We'll have an update and checking accounts for the underprivileged. This is the Delaware Way. Welcome to the Delaware Way. I'm Larry Menti. It has been a strange time in the labor market for Delaware. Nobody knew what was going to happen with DuPont, with AstraZeneca, Comores, and now things have settled down a little bit. So where are we? Well, to talk about that, the Department of Labor Secretary Patrice Gilliam Johnson, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. So where are we right now? We are moving very rapidly to try to get as many people employed as we can. Uh, we have, as you said, experienced quite a bit of turmoil with regard to a number of the companies here in Delaware. Um, we're working very, very hard to make sure that uh, we remove as many barriers as we can to get people employed, that we are looking at high demand jobs and attempting to get people employed in those particular positions and continuing to, to try to reach out to get money into the Department of Labor so that we have the resources that we need to be able to work with the individuals who are in need of employment. Because of the names of the companies and the type of the companies we're talking about that are either leaving or downsizing, or in the case of DuPont, DuPont had a merger and some of the operation mm -hmm. went elsewhere, you have some very specialized jobs and high paying jobs. It must be difficult to find a spot for them. We do have a, a group of individuals who are finding themselves displaced um, in numbers that we've not quite experienced in the state before. We're finding that a lot of those individuals are highly educated, highly skilled, highly technical types of, of individuals with a particular skill set. Um, but we're working really, really hard to try to figure out how we can work with those individuals so that the state can benefit. You certainly don't want people that have high, uh, the, the ability to, to, uh, to, to attract high incomes to leave the state. Absolutely. So what we have just recently done is to apply for a grant. We're doing that quite a bit, to be very honest with you. But We've applied for a national grant, which was a reemployment and integrate and system integration uh, national dislocated dislocated grant, um, where uh, a number of states throughout the country could apply for the grant. To my understanding, about 43 states were approved um, and got some of the money. Um, from the federal government, Delaware being one of those. And we've gotten a grant of approximately $693,000 where we are working to develop a web-based system that can integrate with JobLink, which is our computerized system that we use in employment services um, to assist individuals in finding jobs. And the intention really is the impetus for um, attempting to get this grant and getting the money was to create a system that could specifically help us target individuals like the ones we're talking about in DuPont. So these would be individuals, again, who are highly educated, high, have high technical skills, um, and who, uh, for one reason or another, have a skill set that we want to keep and maintain in Delaware. But one of the things that this system will help us do is to figure out, or help the individual figure out, how to, um, uh, you know, position their skills so that they're transferable to other areas, more marketable to other areas. Um, it takes them through a process of um, looking at what skills they have, what skill sets they feel comfortable with, but how those skills can be transferred to other careers so that in addition to being uh, eligible for jobs that they've just been um, laid off from um, or closed out of, they now have a sense of what other careers they I get could you. go into. So if somebody's a manager of, of scientific materials department, they don't have, their, their science knowledge they don't have to rely on because they have this managerial experience exactly. and the managerial experience could be transferred into most other industries. Exactly. And that's how it would work. Someone else was here a short time ago and talking about the DuPont specifically. And I don't want to just stay on DuPont because I know you're talking about more than just DuPont. They just have such a name in the sure, state. Sure, sure. But he was saying that one of the ways that this can actually help a state when DuPont moves on, because it's happened in other states, they leave behind 
so such a brain trust mm -hmm. that those people end up building other companies. Exactly. And then you get you create more jobs. Exactly. I would imagine that you're you're trying to see that as well. We're trying to see that um, and trying to help figure help people to figure out how they might work together, how they might turn their skills into some sort of uh, entrepreneurial types of opportunities. We're also attempting, and through this particular grant where we're um, working with dislocated workers, we're also, in addition to helping individuals find work, we're also attempting to package skills in such a way that we can then use that package to take it out to employers so that employers can see what are the skill sets of, of individuals here in Delaware so it may attract um, employers to come to Delaware because they're looking for a particular type of skill. It may very well be that it opens other opportunities up for employers who are here who want to take advantage of people who have particular types of skills in addition to helping individuals understand that they have a marketable skill that they can use uh, from an entrepreneurial standpoint or can continue to move into other organizations and begin to take advantage of opportunities. Right, we're lo we're, I've been focusing on the negative of this. The positive of this is when you have that kind of talent base, yeah, exactly. that could attract companies. Mm -hmm. and, and so when you're going out to get maybe a smaller agricultural or science company, you can say, look, the workers are already here. They've been doing this for years. Exactly, and use that information to market Delaware to kind of say, hey, look, here's a group of people that we have. Here's a skill base that could be very, very uh, good, a very good skill base for particular types of employers. So come on into Delaware because we have the kinds of people that you're looking for. That all being said, Delaware is doing pretty well with the unemployment rate. Doing pretty well in the un with what, the what unemployment rate. What is it now? 4.3. 4.3, mm -hmm. which is one of the lowest in the country. Pretty low in the country. How are the wages doing compared to that? Are the wages up or down? Um, the way, we, right now we're trying to get a better sense of that. Okay. Um, with regard to BLS and U.S. Department of Labor, we're still pretty, um, we've got a, a pretty good amount of job uh, coverage and the skills, I mean the numbers are up. Um, we have just gotten wage data in now, so we're looking specifically at Delaware and we'll get a better sense of that as time goes uh, on. The state did a tremendous job in keeping Comores here. I, I thought they were gone. I think most people I thought they lot. were gone yeah. and in changing a little bit of the corporate tr tax rate, mm -hmm. that helped keep them. That I would think is going to attract other companies as well. I would have believed so and we're hoping so at this particular point in time. Uh, I think all of us at some point were, were a little bit concerned about what was going to happen. But uh, with them staying here, I think it's going to attract other people. Hopefully, it will open up some opportunities also for employment for some of the people coming through DOL. Well, I appreciate you spending your time. Thank you. Thank you so I much. Appreciate it. Department of Labor Secretary Patrice Gilliam Johnson. The Delaware Way continues.